Hey, welcome to the Arroyo podcast. My name is Griffin. This is my brother, Josh. And our goal and our heart behind this podcast is to help you navigate life and culture through the lens of Christ. And so I kind of wanted to center today's conversation around uh, a few different things. But first, I wanted to start um, in just examining how church and culture kind of collide Whoa, and collide collide here yeah. we go and in particular really asking the question how should or to what extent should the church be involved with affecting the culture should we be fighting the culture war and how do we go about navigating kind of some hostile murky waters that i believe what we're living in where the days that we're in today are much more divisive than they were even like five, 10 years ago. For sure. And so I kind of wanted to start today's convo on that. I know that was a very broad stroke of this conversation, but no, I kind of wanted to hear just I, your I, initial I, thoughts. I agree of, with you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. even just thinking back to when I was in high school, 2012, yeah you know, a little over a decade ago, thinking of how things were then. You just versus, dated yourself. Right I just there. dated myself. I'm almost 30. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a dad with two kids. But, you know, even just going back to a time that wasn't that long ago, it feels like it was just sure. yesterday. There wasn't the culture wars that we're experiencing now. Like our culture is so polarized. It's so divided. Mm. Uh, and that has to, it really extends into all sorts of different areas, whether that's, you know, political whether it's, you know, spiritual, whether it's sexual. I mean, it's in all these sure. different areas yeah. where it, it almost seems like it's okay. Half of our culture believes this about this issue and the yes. other half believes this about this issue. And so there's this fight and there's this war. And so then the question is, is, you know, how does the church fit into that? How does the church uh, interact with that sure. or should it interact with it at all? It, and that's where I kind of wanted to start this because, it, it feels like you're walking on thin ice as a, mm -hmm. a minister or a church leader or a pastor, because if you say nothing, you're indicted. If yep. you say something, you're indicted. And to me, it's become such an echo chamber on both sides. It's like, how, how do we even find uh, a place where we can have meaningful dialogue mm -hmm. and move forward where you know, it doesn't seem like this is even a fight against left and right or um, political parties. To me, it feels much, much more of a dire circumstance. It feels more of like a fight of against good and evil, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It feels more like um, a kingdom of darkness versus a kingdom of light. And how do we step into that in the truth of the gospel and the truth of who Jesus says he is and as Jesus followers? Yeah. Well, how do we step into this in a thoughtful way? Well, I think there are, are, are three main ways that people try to engage the culture. And I, I think two of them are actually wrong and one is the right way. So I think uh, the two extremes that need to be avo avoided is, number one, uh, the church conforming to culture. Yes. And we see that this definitely needs to be addressed. a lot today is the church conforming to culture. So it's okay. Whatever is popular, uh, yeah. whatever people are believing these days, whatever uh, the world is pressuring you to believe, whatever everybody's posting on social media, whatever people are right. affirming today, that's what the, the church needs to do. If the church is going to be relevant in 2023, the church needs <laughs> to not only stay up, stay up to date with and understand the trends, but we need to fall in line with all the trends yeah. and adhere to all of them. And so that's a really big mistake because what ends up happening when you do that is it's no longer the light standing into the darkness. It's actually what's supposed to be the light becoming darkness within the darkness. So you're not actually standing out. You're not yeah. different from the world. Uh, right. You're just like the world. You're not and set apart. So yes, here we go. Okay. I, I want to read a verse. Okay, please. Because this is a please. technically an Arroyo Church podcast, right? The Arroyo podcast. So I John seventeen it. verse Give fourteen to nineteen. This is going to mm. get into how the church should engage culture. Okay, this is a really powerful verse, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples just before he's about to be arrested, crucified, and then eventually resurrected three days later. He says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them mm. for they are not of the world any more mm. than I am not of the world. My prayer is not that you would take them 
out of the world, yeah. but that you would protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as yes. I am not of it. And then yeah. he says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent yes. them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. So mm. there are a few points here and I want to hear your thought, thoughts on them. I, th- I see a few things here. Actually, yes. three things. Number one, he says that they're not of the world. Yep. So what's he mean by that? And then number two, he says, but they're in the world and I've sent them into the world. So what's he mean by that? Mm-hmm. And then thirdly, he talks about the way that they're actually able to do this, to be in the world but not of the world, mm-hmm. is because they're sanctified yes. by his truth. So how about we start with this uh, this first idea I want to hear. What does it mean for us to not be of the world? Because I don't think it means think to great. constantly uh, challenge the culture and just to be hermit crabs and, yes. you know, um, yeah. quarantining isn't just for 2020 and COVID. We're just right. going to be quarantining Christians. We're going to hide away from the world. So what's he mean when he says don't yeah. be of the world? I love that you're asking this and that you brought that passage up. I had no idea that you were going to bring it up. And I had in, in the back of my mind uh, a couple verses that just line up perfectly with this. Just this idea of how do we live in the world but not become you know, a part of it and let us get swept up as it as believers. And just highlighted this verse from First John uh, chapter 4. says this simply, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Meaning how do we navigate the world and its problems and its people and the challenges that we face in our everyday lives? Well, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have to realize that as children of God, we have the spirit of God inside us that allows us to navigate every problem that we face. But you know what? I think that the other aspect of it is God's word. Mm -hmm. I think we live in a time where um, we have Christians and even churches that are trying to, to, um, I almost said deconstruct, but <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that word. Yeah, yeah, it's a trigger word. A trigger word for some people. Um, I'm triggered. That, that, <laughs> I'm triggered right now. Um, but but they they care more about um, picking apart the Bible than they do about preaching God's word and standing mm-hmm. on it. And and what 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 First John says is that his commands aren't a burden. That meaning that that God's way of living and his commands and his word is actually meant to free you and help you live within the confines of how God constructed and created this life. So when we're both living by God's spirit and and walking in his word and standing on his word and not trying to to pick it apart or find loopholes uh, in, in what God has to say about our lives, that is when I think we're able to interact with culture in a healthy way. Yeah. And I think Going back to what I said in the beginning, too, of not being of the world. So as we're yeah. living by the Spirit of God and in alignment with the Word of God, like you said, what happens is is we're not of the world, meaning, I think, that we're not taking yeah. on the same characteristics of the world. We're not just doing everything in our lives because yeah. it's what everybody else is doing. We're not believing what everybody believes uh, about all these different things just because it's it's what's popular. We're sure. we're living in a line. So we look different. Yeah. We 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 our families look different. Yes. The way we do business, yes. it looks different. The way we speak. The way we speak, it looks different. Yeah. Um the way we spend our money, it looks different. It all looks different. Um but that just because it's different doesn't mean God doesn't want us to be in the world because I think, you know, a lot of Christians they, they want to be uh, not of the world. And so what can happen is there can be like this Christian subculture yeah, where it's like, I only do cr- go and go to Christian sure. things. So like I only go to a Christian school and talk to Christian people, yeah. you know, I only go to church and talk to people at church. Um, I only watch Christian movies and like, it's like, sure. I only listen to Christian music. Like only the only things I interact with are things that are labeled as Christian. And I don't think that's healthy because sure. sure you, you might not be of the world, but then are you like Jesus said, are you in the world on mission? Yeah. Because a part of what it means to be a believer is to not just be, um, not of the world, uh, and to have Christ like behavior that's in contrast mm-hmm. to the world, but also he wants us to live in the world on mission, which means, which means we're interacting people, yes. interacting with people and we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're interacting with them in such a way that they're able to see Jesus's love in us mm-hmm. and how we act and in the words that we say. 
Yes. I think that's really important. In fact, uh, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 9, yes. and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this verse, when it. he talks about, I became all things to all people mm. so that I might win some for Christ. And I think that that verse right. has a lot to do with what it means to be in the world on mission. Yeah. Because he's saying, this is how I do it, right? Mm. I become all things to all people so that I might win some to Christ, right? Yeah. So what's that look like? I think that uh, that's a really good question because I think that there is the line between compromise and um, relating to somebody mm -hmm. so that you can build a bridge. I like that, I, that word relate. Because really, yeah. I can relate to you mm -hmm. and seek understanding and become interested in who you are and your story without compromising my my viewpoint and my value system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's a part of the problem is that we live in a culture of compromise mm -hmm. and a culture of we care more about the feelings of mm -hmm. of people than we do about let's, reality. Let's do an and exercise truth. here. I think this is, might be a good exercise. Sure. Here. Let's pick a specific <laughs> okay. topic or let's get really specific here. A specific oh, wow. topic or area. Woo. I don't know if you have one on the top of my mind. And let's categorize yeah. it. Um, if as we look at that area. How do you relate at that level to that topic without mm. compromising it? So how should the Christian relate yeah. to social media? Because I think that uh, yeah. I've seen some people say, oh, uh, social media is of the devil or mm. I can't be on it. So I'm just off. You know, I, I've actually seen increasingly more Christians do that. And I think that get off the social media. Just, I'm off it completely. Yeah. I'm off the grid. And I think there's a time and place for that and mm -hmm. taking breaks for it. And then there's also other Christians where it's like, okay, you're on it every single second of the day. Yeah. And so how do you think a Christian should interact on social media? Should Christians be on yeah. social media? What, what should that look like? Well, I think this is really important for 2023. Really, I mean, I don't feel like I a lot it's of applicable. people talk about how do you interact on online? As a, as a there are two parts to it. I think in, in my mind, the first part is, are you being consumed by it or, or are you making a difference through those mediums? And are you a creator or are you a consumer? Because mm -hmm. if you are just solely a consumer, I, I wouldn't say don't consume. I would mm -hmm. say be careful about what you consume because yeah. your feed, your uh, for you page, um, mm -hmm. and whatever social media you're on, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, for you older folks, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's true. fill in the blank, has a great influence on you. Yeah, it does. And so what you mm -hmm. fill up your mind with affects your heart, and your mm -hmm. heart affects the way you live your life, mm -hmm. and because everything flows from that place. And so yeah. I just... The proverb says, yes, guard your heart. Guard your heart. For from it yep. flows the wellspring of life. Exactly. And so I just think there are... I would say be careful about what you're consuming. Mm -hmm. And if you're consuming too much, it's better to, to maybe cut off for a season yeah. so you could reapproach it in a healthier yeah. way. And then also consider how you could create good influence. Mm -hmm. Man, we need better. We need more influencers that Christian and Christian influencers that are less, yeah. less concerned about their personal image yeah. and more concerned about proclaiming the gospel and yeah. sharing the good news of Jesus and, just helping people with everyday being life. An influencer is so. like you don't have to have a hundred thousand followers or a million followers to be an influencer on social media. Right. If, if you, you have ten just, followers, you're you an influencer. If you can be an influencer for your hundred friends on Facebook yeah. or your fifty followers on Instagram or whatever, how many yep. people are following you on social media? If you post a verse or share a story of how God has changed your life or whatever, and it doesn't mean that like all the content you post has to be overtly Christian. Like we're not saying that. Yeah. Like if you want to post a picture of your cheeseburger, whatever, that's sure. great. You want to post a picture of your kid or your wife or the vacation you went on. Awesome. But also as a follower of Jesus, I think all of our lives should be a reflection of who Christ is, including our life online. And so I think, yeah. you know, what's really cool about living the time in the time we live in now is we live in the age of information. We live in the age of communication and you have an opportunity to be an evangelist to more people online than people yeah. ever did in the past. The, 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 the possibilities are endless. And mm -hmm. so I think that's something that, that you should take advantage of to get the message of the gospel out. Um, but 
to what you said, and I kind of want to get into social media addiction a little bit because you talked about cutting it off for a season. And sure. uh, it reminded me of what yeah. Jesus talked about when he said, you know, if your right hand causes <laughs> you to sin, you yeah. know, cut it off. Yeah. You know, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck right. it out. And obviously Jesus isn't saying we should be, you know, lopping off limbs and hyperbole. Pl- he's he's yeah. hyperbolic. But yeah. what he's saying, if there's something in your life that's causing you to stumble, take yes. it out. So maybe I'd love to even hear from you personally because oh, wow. you've, I think, gone through interesting times in your social media journey because you've had a lot of followers on TikTok and you still do like over 70,000 or something like that. And you had a lot of traction with that and Instagram and different things. And you've had times in your life, I know where you were really in it to the point where maybe it was unhealthy for you. Sure. And then you took breaks. And then I think you've had times in your life where you had a more healthy interaction with it. So here, share yeah, more I'm not here story trying on that. to flex or anything no, or I, there well, are people that have way more no, influence totally. than I do and that's kind of like a micro yeah um but I yeah I, I've ex- I guess I've experienced enough to say that uh it's super addicting yeah and there are a lot of I guess my kind of a different rabbit trail but back, I'll get back to your um the heart of it what you're saying you know I think my biggest concern is the younger generation yeah. that is is being mm-hmm. influenced and deceived yeah. by uh, quote unquote influencers yeah. that have a way of living or different lifestyles that mm-hmm. they've made yeah. normal or. Um, well, can we just hit a pause button here? Sure. Yeah. If you're more influenced yeah. by. Uh, non Christians on social media I was gonna say than it. you are by Christ it's a through the word of God. That's a really big problem. It's a problem. That's yeah. a big problem. It's normal. But see, just because something's normal that in the world, that doesn't yeah. mean that it should be normal in the life of yeah. a believer. We're we're called to be set yeah. apart and distinct. Well, in the and, world and not of it again, right? And right? So let's get back to how that how does that work out on social media, right? To be in social media, to be on social media, but not to be of all of what happens on social media. Cause there's some pretty dark, sure. nasty, sinful things that yeah. happen on social media. Yeah. And again, we, we don't want to be the, yeah, I can't believe that happens in the world. Christians like, yes, the social yeah. media is a, it's a microscope into society. We could see closely, uh, things that were happening before, but we could just see them at a global level now that we have social media. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's showing and bringing to the surface what humanity has always been, which is mm-hmm. broken and sinful and, yeah. um, and, and, and it's given more opportunities mm-hmm. to maybe be rebellious mm-hmm. in ways. And, and, and so I, I think kind of going back to, are you being consumed by it mm-hmm. or are you being, an influencer yep. on it and yeah. uh, meaning like, do you have the ability to say no? Mm-hmm. Do you even have the ability to delete an app yourself mm-hmm. and, and go throughout your day without scrolling or, yeah. and even just taking inventory and yeah. auditing the people that you listen to, mm-hmm. like who, who, who do you listen to on a weekly I basis? Found that is myself isn't, yeah. being more angry when I'm listening to people sure. frequently that are angry. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's not, not good. My wife no. doesn't like that. Yeah, so I think it's good to to really filter. It affects you way more than you think. To yes. and reading and all of those things, because um, people don't read books as much right. these days. But they're constantly reading tweets. They're constantly reading people's posts. Like all of. But that we can't stuff. escape it because. And this is why we're doing this podcast right now, because yeah. we want we want to be a. This part is a way of, of being in the world. We want to be in it. We want to. We <laughs> yeah. want to speak into it yeah um, and we want you to too so yeah and and to give a a godly perspective a christ-like outlook on life's problems mm-hmm. and what people are dealing with yeah but yeah i don't know do you have anything to add to I, that yeah, i mean i just I, we kind of already mentioned this a little bit but i would just say if you're listening and just practically speaking if you find yourself like addicted to social media like that's a real thing like you're not able to say no to it like you're constantly on it all the time and like you always have to have your phone around you like you know and listen i'm not speaking down and condemning because honestly my wife gives me a hard time about this sometimes yeah and i kind of have to check myself i have to to check myself and so 
you know, I think a healthy way to go about it is cutting your, yourself off of it for a season, like you said earlier. Sure. And then, you know, one of the things my wife has really pushed me and challenged me to do, which I still don't do this perfectly, but okay, get off it. Like I was off of Instagram. I went on back onto Instagram like a little under a year ago, but I was off it for like five years. Mm. And I was off it because... Honestly, it was just something that wasn't a priority for my life at that time. And yeah. it was something that I just didn't feel like in that, in that season of my life. My, my wife wasn't comfortable sure. with it sure. at that point. Just to be honest, she wasn't wanting me to, to be on there. And we kind of got to a point where it's like, okay, you can go back on it, but we have to have boundaries. There has to be mm-hmm. guardrails. What you can do and what you can't do on Instagram. So you're intentionally being, like you said, uh, yeah. you're being a creator. You're being somebody that's adding value to other people's life, but you're not being yeah. consumed by it. You're not purely a consumer. So I would say is if like you feel like you're being um, influenced by social media in a bad way or maybe you're addicted to it, I think it doesn't have to be five years. That was a really long time. But pull away <laughs> from next it half for decade. maybe a month, yeah. you know, <laughs> and during that month, do a cleanse and then come up with some, you know, maybe just some guidelines. Of or like, maybe okay. there's just some people you need to unfollow. Yeah. That you didn't even realize how much they were influencing <laughs> you, the way you think, the way you behave, the way you treat other people. But as we're talking, you're like, whoa. Yeah. I'm I'm realizing there there's a much deeper effect that's going on that yeah. it's it's altered some of the ways mm-hmm. that I've thought. Well, I love my feed because I follow a lot of churches and pastors. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'm just like scrolling and I it's only like, oh, follow. there's an awesome quote or an awesome yeah. sermon clip or whatever. And it's like encouraging. And like, that's the thing about all these sure. algorithms is they push to you what you, you want, Yeah, you know? And yeah. it's almost like, Hey, you want to know your character? Just look at what they're pushing mm-hmm. you because uh, yep. <laughs> they're giving you what you want. Uh, right. They're smart. Right. So. Uh, if they're pushing a lot of bad stuff to you, it means you're probably not watching good stuff. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I think that that's some good stuff on social media. I don't know any other thoughts. Well, I don't know. I think we, I think we, we started this, this dialogue on mm-hmm. the premise of how do we interact in culture Actually, as Christians? We, I feel like we'd be really, I, this just came to my mind. Sure. Yeah. Cancel culture. Okay. Yeah. If we're cancel. talking about, and maybe this is where we could end. I mean, we're talking about Christians okay. interacting with culture. We're culture. kind of bouncing around. All cancel culture. So, yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. about sexuality, social media. Now Going, cancel culture. Hitting all the bases. Okay. Why don't you talk a little bit about cancel culture? Yeah. Or do you want me to start? You looked at me. I like, mm. I don't even know where to start because I feel like <laughs> it's yeah. um, such a pervasive part of mm-hmm. who we are. And how everyone... It's so normal. It's so and, normal. and actually, I think it's actually a good bridge to go from social media to cancel culture. Because I think social media is like one of the main engines for cancel culture. I think, I think, <laughs> you know, don't be afraid of cancel culture. I think if you're a Christian, uh, there's a good chance to whatever extent uh, you would classify being canceled as, there's a good chance you're going to be canceled. Now... A much more harsh word would be persecuted. And when you think in light of what some other Christians are going through in other countries, are, and even in some places in our, in our country, but to a greater extent other countries in the world, what how they're being persecuted for their faith. Yeah, people are getting their heads chopped off. They're getting tortured. They're getting tortured. killed. Yeah. They're having family members killed. They're being separated. They're having to operate in underground churches. Like yeah. they, the stakes are so low here. I do not care if you cancel me yeah. for my faith. I really could care less. And I, and I I used to not be able to say that. Yeah. I think that's a good I, attitude to have. But right. then also we want to like not just get canceled because we're careless. You know, is too, is being time. canceled a badge of honor? With where our See, culture I, is I, at, I, I don't think because it, yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's something that we should aspire to. <laughs> no, it's, I'm not we saying need that. To, yeah, just you know, grace and truth, like I was saying <laughs> right. earlier. And then if we get canceled while speaking the truth in a graceful, kind way, so be it. But if you're speaking the truth and being a jerk about it, and you get canceled. I don't think that's you being Christ-like. I think that's you being a, a dummy. Okay, can we shift gears? Well, uh, from cancel culture. It's I got more to say about cancel okay. culture. Okay, okay. What were you because say? I, I think it's I, I think that much of cancel culture is it points to people's desire for justice for mm-hmm. when somebody does something. It's wrong. a false sense of just, justice. And I think that 
the sense of, you know, in the desire of wanting justice is a good thing because God is a God of justice. You know, sure. God uh, punishes people that do wrong. And that's ultimately Bible why Jesus says had justice to, belongs to the Lord. Yeah, that's why Jesus had to go on the cross because the whole point of the cross is He's taking yeah. on the punishment that we deserve in our place and rising it again three right. days later, so that we could be forgiven and free, so that our debt could be paid. So God's a God of justice. Justice is a part of the gospel itself. Uh, God says that all government and all law enforcement is actually over His rule and reign, and yeah. so He's a God of justice. Uh, in regards to the gospel, he's a God of justice in regards to even practically speaking with uh, the, the law enforcement and, you know, the, the civil system of uh, sure. the world that we live in. So I think justice is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, the point is, is where it goes too far is it's OK, you did something wrong. Now uh, we're going to look at something, something that you disagree with, some, something that you disagree, d- disagree with me on or something you did wrong 10 or 15 years ago. I pulled it up. You posted yeah. it on your MySpace page when you were in ninth grade and you said this thing that is really mean. And because of that, now, 15 years later, we're going to wipe you out and we're going to just take you out and we're just going to make sure you lose your job or lose your money. That's not right. God's a God of grace. He's a God of justice, but he's also a God of of grace, and I think honestly, uh, a lot of cancel culture needs to be canceled because uh, God's a God of, of second chances. That doesn't mean that people shouldn't sure. be held accountable. There are people that do things wrong, and they need to be held accountable for their actions, and there needs to be yeah. consequences for their actions. But also, let's not be so quick to grab the stone and throw it either. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I think that's what cancel culture is. Is it saying, oh, you did this, we're going to grab the stone and we're just going to chuck it at your head as fast as we can and as quick as we can because we're ticked off at you for what you did or said. And I don't think that's right. I think we need to extend grace. But don't you think that the current state of cancel culture has infiltrated the church? Absolutely. In a way that it's caused them to uh, say no to talking about certain topics and parts of scripture. For sure. Because they're afraid of being canceled by a certain group of people. For sure. I mean... Yeah, and don't you think that's cancel part of culture the problem? is very powerful, and it creates a culture of fear within people because now it's like you're stepping on eggshells because you don't want to be canceled. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and that goes back to what we were saying earlier about you know, are you going to please God or are you going to please uh, please others? And you got to make that decision who's more important to please. Yeah. Both of those decisions have consequences. Yes, because if you live to please the world and you live for the world, you're turning away from God and for. You're turning away from relationship with God now and into eternity. And then if you love God mm-hmm. and if you live to please him and follow him, it's promised in scripture yep. that you will be mocked and scoffed at by the world and persecuted. Yep. Persecution is a promise yep. for every believer yep. at whatever context that is and whatever context you live in. Yep. But I was even just talking to a friend yesterday about how persecution is a promise for believers. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the indicators is, you know, you don't go seeking to be canceled or seeking to be persecuted. Yeah. That's not, but if you're living boldly for your faith, you will be persecuted. Yeah. And it's to some level, it's to some, whatever. uh, That's why I said whatever context you're in. That's what I'm saying is like whatever your context is. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I think that's important to note, like, cause Mm-hmm. If you're not, let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. If you're not being persecuted or you've never been persecuted, should that be a red flag in your faith and your walk? I God? mean, it's at least a yellow flag, if not right? a red flag. Maybe it's an orange shouldn't, flag. Shouldn't you ask yourself I mean, the if question, you've been following Jesus for one month, I wouldn't say that's a, you know, whatever, you know, because you're just starting out. But right. I think... Yeah, I mean, if you've been following Jesus for a fair amount of time and you've never experienced any opposition for your faith, like, do yeah. you have a genuine faith? Or is your faith just really immature? Um, you know? Yeah. So at, at, at the most, uh, your faith isn't genuine, and at the least, your faith is immature, and you need to start living more for God and less for people. Yeah, and I was also thinking about, too, because and I think this is intertwined with this topic um, and we can kind of land the plane here, but the churches are more concerned about being compromised to the culture than they mm-hmm. are preaching the word of God and preaching mm-hmm. the gospel, creating disciples. And what's that, what that has caused 
is a, a greater and another issue, which is, mm. I think, the biggest church hurt that people are actually receiving today, mm. which is, I think the biggest church hurt isn't somebody in the church being mean to you, which happens and is wrong. It does, and I've experienced that. And I've that, experienced so that you. as well. Um, but the greatest church hurt today is people not preaching the gospel. Church is not standing on God's word. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Could you tell that story that you told me just a couple of days ago? You you um, got your hair cut recently. And this oh. late, yeah, you had a kind of interesting. Oh, church hurt. Now we're getting yeah, into yeah. church hurt. Wow. Well, I think this is a good segue because I think that mm-hmm. a lot of the church hurt that well, so this person, become a huge topic. So I was getting a haircut. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this uh, awesome lady found out that I was a pastor and she made a comment about, oh, have you ever experienced church hurt? And I was like, yeah, I have. And she asked me that question. I was like, that's a really interesting question. It's become a topic of conversation. So then I was like, well, what about you? Have you experienced church hurt? And so she ended up pouring her whole whole heart out to me. And, you know, earlier we were talking about churches that only challenge the culture and Mm -hmm. churches that only uh, conform to it. She was at a church that constantly challenged the culture. Yeah. And so what they did, you know, she didn't get into the specifics of what was going on in her life. Right. But she said that they saw something in her life and said that God had put curses on her life and that those oh curses could never be lifted. Uh, yeah. And they basically ki- they kicked her out of the church. Oh, my goodness. And uh, she had just wow. started attending the church. And that was the first time she was 35 when this happened. That was the That's first terrible. time she attended church since she was seven years old. And it was a smaller church. I, well, I asked her, I said, was yeah. it a smaller church? And uh, she's like, yeah. And I said, well, that's why they're really small. Because <laughs> that's, that's how, how they small. treat people. Right. Yeah. And they're never going to grow yeah. because yeah. Uh, they're not loving. They're not kind. And so that was a church that just constantly yeah. challenged the culture and constantly challenged people and said, oh, what you're doing is wrong. You're a sinner. You're a terrible person. You're condemned. Constantly throwing Get stones. out of here. Yeah. Right? And they're a lot more like the religious uh, religious leaders that Jesus constantly butted heads and with. Rebuked. That thought that they were righteous because of their own deeds and were looked down on others and yeah. thought they were better than other people when really they weren't. They yeah. were actually more sinful and more lost than even the prostitutes and all the thieves and all the people uh, that Jesus was hanging out with and all the drunkards that Jesus was hanging out with. Jesus actually was like, mm, actually, I came uh, for the people that know they need a doctor, know they're sick. Yeah. For the people that think they're not well, uh, that for the people that think they're healthy, those are actually the people that are least healthy because yeah. it's the person, it's not the person that is sick and knows they're sick that is the most sick. Mm-hmm. It's the person that thinks they're healthy when they're sick. That's the person that's most in danger. And uh, that's where a lot of churches are, like uh, the one that, where that lady was at, was that they were probably just as sick as her but didn't yeah. even know it. And so they could see her sin but yeah. couldn't see their own sin. And that's what Jesus talks about when he says, hey, take the plank out of your own eye before you take the speck out of another people person's eye. I think uh, it's very easy to see other people's faults yes. before seeing your own. Yeah. And so she was at a church that I think they had a big plank coming out of their eye, but they saw the speck in hers and they pummeled her for yeah. it and they canceled her for it and they kicked her out of the church for it. And so she it's came wrong. to a place where she rejected Christ. She's rejected the church. And we had this great conversation where I got to tell her about the real Jesus mm. and got to tell her about the gospel of grace yeah. and that God loves us uh, before we love him yeah. and that he invites us into a relationship with him and he offers us free forgiveness. He often offers us the hope of heaven. He offers us adoption into his family all freely. We just have to receive it by faith. Yeah. And so I was sharing all this with her and I just asked her the question. I said, Hey, would you give Jesus a second chance? And yeah. she said, yeah, I think I would, but I don't think I'll ever want to give the church a second chance. She said so that. And that broke my heart. It's a, yeah. And, you know, we ended Isn't up... Isn't that a contradiction, though? It is a complete contradiction. But you know what? She's looking at it through the lens, not of logic. She's but looking at feeling. it through the lo- lens of her, her hurt. And it's yeah. understandable. And so, again, you have to just meet people where they are. I said, listen, yeah. I totally understand that. And I'm sorry for how those people treated you. But I want, I want you to know this. You will never find a perfect church. I was just going to say this. But you can find a healthy church. Yeah. And that was an unhealthy church. That was a church that only knew how to confront and challenge the culture, but didn't know how to lovingly engage the tr- culture in grace and truth and engage people in grace and truth. And I guarantee you, I, I said, 
you don't have to go to my church because she actually doesn't live in the town where our church yeah. meets. But you'll at. recommend another church. But I said, I know a great church in town. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were leaving and she said, hey, please come back for a haircut soon. I want to talk more. I want to ask you more questions. And I said, hey, I'll be That's back great. See you in as two soon weeks. as I can. I said, I don't grow hair, grow hair that fast. But when I do, I'll come back and we could talk more. I said, but before you do, you know, mm. I recommended her church in the town she lives in. Yeah. And I said, listen. I know they're not a perfect church, but they're a healthy church. And I know for a fact, I know the pastor and I know people there. They won't treat you the way that church did. Yes. And it was crazy. She said, actually, that's the church my boss goes to. <laughs> and I said, great. She could it's bring beautiful. you to church next Sunday. It's and she great. said, okay, I'll think about it. So yeah, it was cool. I love that. My prayer too is just that if you're listening to this or watching and you've experienced some kind of church hurt in your life, that you would come to the realization that the people of God don't, don't always represent, um, what Jesus stands for and uh, the most perfect light. Mm -hmm. And um, I think along the way, it's like it's church is messy mm -hmm. sometimes. And man, if I, if I let all of my church hurt prohibit me from living yep, me in too. the call that God has for my life, I would have quit yep. four years ago. Me too. I'm really thankful ago, that my two. faith doesn't rest on people. It rests on Christ. Yes. Because my ultimate joy and my ultimate calling rests on who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the culture says. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. what kind of hurt I've gathered in the church. Because you know what? Ultimately, yeah. love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. And even in our relationship, mm -hmm. uh, in any relationship, yep. there, there are always going to be faults and hurts and sin mm -hmm. and brokenness. And how we deal with that yep. in healthiness mm -hmm. and covering each other, covering mm -hmm. offense, covering love, not, not sweeping it under the table, yep. but in, in truth and love. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's a good place I think to end on what you just yeah. said, talking about the church hurt. I think the reality, the reality is this culture is always going to change. <laughs> culture isn't yeah. static. Culture is always changing. Yes. Uh, the people within the church and people within the world are always going to be changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be people and trends and all sorts of things that go up yeah. and down and this way and that way. But the good news of who God is, is that his faithful love endures forever, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And as yes. we engage a culture that is constantly changing, let's do that with the belief in mind that God never changes. His truth never changes. Heaven and, yeah. heaven and earth pass away, but his word never passes away, the yes. Bible says. And his love never changes. His truth never changes. So let's rest in that truth as we engage a culture that is always changing. That's perfect. That's great. Well, hey, we love you. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and listening to the Arroyo podcast today. And wherever you're at, we hope you enjoyed it. It blessed you. And if you could rate, review, uh, send it to a friend if, it's if it's five encouraged stars, you. Don't, yeah. don't review it if it's Don't give us a five. four star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No four star. But yeah, we appreciate it. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. All right, see you next time.